Well, good morning, everyone. Um, absolutely just a pleasure to be in front of everyone and be the student speaker for this year. So I'm absolutely excited. Um, but in order for me to get a little comfortable with you guys and your, uh, I guess, your knowledge gap of 3D printing, I'm going to start with a question. Um, so if you guys could raise hands or a little bit of participation, that would be excellent. Um, so let's get into it. How many of you guys in the audience have thought of 3D printing as something that could change the world around you? Now, well, I'm going to finish with that. Now, I'm not talking about like, oh, you can see it on the news and, uh, and all oh, this cool story or whatever, or this internet article. I'm talking about actually like people in your life, this can change how they get to live and think and work. So how many people? Where's hands? All right, <laughs> well, that's not what I thought. Because um, when I personally started working here at uh, NIU's Arm Lab, um, this is our two 3D printers that we do research on. Well, while we continually push the envelope of what's possible with 3D printing here, whether it's designing products or um, working with different materials in order to help research institutions like, for example, um, sometimes we help DOD or we even help uh, NIST, which, is, which sets the national standards of materials. And while we do those things and we push the envelope continually every day there, I never really thought that it could kind of help someone on a personal level, right? And so um, if any of you guys know what I do, it's not glorified uh, desktop printing, actually. Like, so for example, these machines are probably like six or seven feet tall, um, and they're messy. <laughs> As you can see, uh, we have all these like powders that need to be kind of ground and dusted down right to the micron. Um, and that's really what we do. So everything from designing different products to, to kind of just different tasks like this, we, we're continually touching these materials and making them better and seeing, OK, how can we push the envelope of 3D printing? And so that's always been like where I focus my research and my hope on, but I never truly thought, once again, that I could change someone's life, let alone my life, through it. At least that was until uh, my boss, Dr. Shimarella, he asked me, hey, so I have a project for you, and it could potentially be big in terms of how our lab looks at projects in the future. Would you be interested? And I absolutely said yes. Like I'm like, I want to work on this. This is why I'm here at NIU, to be able to do big things like this. Um, and he continued, and he's like, so there's this girl. She's in middle school. She wants to play violin. Um, she's been playing already, but she only has a, like a left hand. Like her right hand, was, she was born without it. And uh, her parents had reached out to us about you know, having a 3D printer um, and being able to maybe make something or just print an idea or something online for her. And I said, this is going to be awesome. I am 100% in. Let's do it. And I just want to make a quick side note that projects like this at other universities, right, they don't go to undergraduate students like me, right? You go to graduate students. You go to people who have experience, right? A lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of experience and, and just strength in, in material science. And I'm not, one, I'm not an, a graduate student. And two, like, I'm only a senior this semester, right? So imagine a year back when this was happening, I was still in my classes that would teach me how to essentially design and, and work with stuff like this. Um, but I took on that project, and I took on the confidence that my boss gave me, and I worked on it. Um, and that was absolutely wonderful. But as you can see, when we kind of went on Enable, which, by the way, is a great site that helps people um, that need prosthetics. It gives them the ideas and 3D renderings online, and they can just print them. Um, this was a great idea for a bow holder. It really was. And it's kind of what I fabricated my work around. But at the same time, like you can see right here, there's spaces. There was, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect for Sarah, because you know, she's, this is a, the size of probably uh, maybe like someone in high school or, or a grown person's hand. And um, over here, it's just, you can tell it's just not shaped continually to how she uh, needs her measurements. And uh, not only that, it's heavy. It was, it was, I mean, it feels light, right, because it's 3D printed material. But I knew that this, like, if I were just to give her this and then say, oh, we're done, we've done our job or whatever, like, I wouldn't feel good about myself. I knew that we could absolutely do better. Um, and so from that point on, literally every week we had met after finals. So it was around this time last year that I was proposed the project. But it wasn't actually until um, after finals that I had been developing prosthetics, meeting with them almost weekly sometimes, uh, sometimes twice a week, uh, because what I had been doing necessarily wasn't working. So like 
like each week we would come up with a design and we'll say, okay, um, here's what I have, and then Sarah will be like, that's awesome, but can you like develop it in this way? Can you lighten it, for example, because that was one of the big things. Can you kind of form factor it to my hand? Is that possible? Can we make it into two parts? And so I had been trying so hard and continually to do that um, and, and trying to get my confidence up as well as an engineer, as a designer, to say, this is like the best job that I can do for each meeting. And, and it really was, and I, and I felt like as I continually developed a lot of these prosthetics, like I was kind of getting my confidence up. But it wasn't the best that I could do, and I wasn't satisfied with it. And actually, um, the breaking point for me was actually a physical breaking point, because one of these prosthetics that I had designed for Sarah had broke while we were um, meeting, right? And normally, like, that's a normal thing for me. Like, failure's like, oh, whatever, I'll just come back stronger next week, right? Uh, but no, that's not what happened this day. We actually had um, NIU Media Services and another media crew coming to interview us for the story. Um, they thought it was so cool, and they were like, hey, like, we're gonna bring like, cameras or whatever in your face and interview us. And, and so everyone was happy, like my boss was happy, Sarah was like, oh, that's so cool. In my mind, I'm like, no, this is not cool at all. Like, I, <laughs> I have 24 hours to like, fix this problem that I just like, caused myself because whether I, uh, didn't design it well, or what I, whether I broke, whatever it was, it's like it just wasn't the best that we could do, and she needed something that I had designed personally for her for the interview the next day. And so um, I remember, like, vividly, after this meeting, like, we, we'd made jokes or whatever, and, and the media services guy, our, our publicist, Joe King, he told me, and he said, hey, Olshan, so she's gonna be able to play tomorrow, right? Ha ha, because it would be, like, embarrassing if she didn't, just, like, as a nervous joke, I think. But in my mind, I was like, I was like, oh, gosh, like, <laughs> like this isn't gonna be good. <laughs> um, and so, literally, we had that meeting at 3 o'clock. I went home, had, like, like a college meal, like so ramen noodles and like apple juice, something like that, because <laughs> I couldn't afford to eat uh, <laughs> super well that day. Um, and, and I took a nap, like every normal college student would. And, uh, and I literally said a prayer, I'm like, God, so like, <laughs> like I can't be embarrassed tomorrow, because that's not good, that's like not how you start off your career as like a young engineer, like to be like, oh, well, if you can't design a prosthetic, you probably can't design Bridges, which isn't true, is what I learned, but we're gonna, <laughs> more of that <laughs> um, here. And so, anyway, this idea of just the breakage and, and just like the distraught and the frustration that I had felt, it kind of was what carried me through the day. So I took that nap, like I said, woke up, I went from literally 6 p.m. that night to 6 a.m. in the lab, working literally on designs. So everything from kind of looking up YouTube videos on why people had designed prosthetics certainly the way that they had, all the way to um, testing and, and 3D printing little designs so like I can kind of get a visual, right, for what I'm doing on the computer. I had done that. I worked so hard on that. And, and it, the hours just flew by. So 6 p.m., right, 7, 8 o'clock, I called for like sushi and I was eating it at my desk, which we're not supposed to have food there, so shh. Um, anyway, um, but I was literally uh, trying my best uh, t to push my limits because I'd known at that point on I had not, right? So we had been meeting and we had been working together and the designs had been getting better, but to me, like, success is only validated in one way. When you have something that you can show for and say, this is the best that I can do. And so while I was getting better, like I said, that clearly was not the best that I can do. And so, like I said, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. working on it. Around midnight that night, I'd actually started the 3D print so we would have it in time for our meeting uh, with the media people. Um, and, and knowing me, I said something could always go wrong. And so I could have left at 12 that night, but I started working on other designs in case Sarah said, this isn't what I want, or, or it's okay for the, uh, for the interviews or whatever, but um, can you design it in this way? And so I, I literally made like 15 different reiterations, didn't go home, went home at 6 a.m., took a short nap, uh, kind of came back to work because I was working on other projects as well, um, uh, doing research, and I decided, okay, this, this is different, right? This is the best that I can do. And you can see the difference now. So we have, um, so from that night, 
we had this uh, new design, right? So not only do you have the, like the special decals, we lightened the load by over 50% actually. Um, so that's one material saved for the lab. And then two, that's feels that she could have to play longer, you know, and not have the strain on her um, wrist. And um, I was absolutely proud of this, not because I pulled a true all-nighter, um, just working on it, uh, but the fact that I can walk away, right? The fact that you can just walk away from something and say, there's literally nothing I could have done better in this time frame, given every single circumstance, right? Every single resource that I had, there's nothing that I could have done better in this. Like, th that, that feeling, it's not the feeling that you get after your final exam where you're like, oh, I could have studied more. No, it's like the feeling where it's like, this is my true work. This is how I pushed my personal boundaries, giving everything that I had. Um, and so that was just absolutely amazing to see. And um, See, the feeling of that, well, one, I think we need to like make a note, like a big note today that like Sarah is talented regardless of whatever I do. <laughs> um, she makes me look good better than I make her, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but also, like the feeling as, as someone who designs and, and gets to work on projects like this, that to say what I've worked on actually like is coming to life, just seeing that. See, it, it's so easy to get worked up, right, when you're designing something on the computer and then say, oh, this is a design or a project or whatever. Like, no, this was an actual person. I truly believe, like, the prosthetic that I developed and worked hard on, it's an actual per it was for an actual person, right? It was personal to her. It's not like I'm mass producing this project, right? It's not like I'm, I'm trying to sell it and, and say, oh, everyone can kind of, like, you know, deal with it if they don't like the sizings. No, this was to, like, perfect it for someone. Someone I'd grown to care about, right? Someone I'd been working with. To me, that's bigger than any other project that I could have worked on here at Northern because how, what better way to test your skills, right, and in, in what you're learning in class and at work than to be able to work with someone personally in the same community where your school is, in a, the community also where her dad is a professor here at Northern, a really good one at that. Um, and uh, that, that's like incredible. That just blew my mind. That was me literally pushing my limits and um, and, and the whole time that I had been working on this project, I thought to myself, I said, I am going to help Sarah, right? I'm going it, to, it's going to be about what I can do for her, right? It's going to be about how I can, can continually, you know, not really prove my skills in, as an engineer, but, but like almost this humanitarian relief thing, right? No, but like it, it turned out to be the opposite way. I was the one who needed help, right? I needed to be more confident in my ability to design. I needed to be more confident in my ability of what I do at my lab, right? I needed to be more confident in where I wanted to go in my future and how I present myself and how I work on different things. And for me, that was what the most important thing from this project was. And as you can see, um, that's Sarah wearing it. Um, and it just gives me so much joy each time uh, I get to see these pictures. And, and that was like the interview. We had it at one of our like, uh, uh, like material labs. Um, it was probably not the best place to have like an interview. It kind of looked cool though. But um, it was absolutely just like a joy that day. I remember to just, to just feel like what I was doing mattered. And you know, the rest of that is history, right? So like we got to like go on live television and tell our story. We got to tell our story to multiple people. We got to inspire high school students, middle school students, anyone who came through, we marketed it, but not so like that the university can make money or that the lab can like can get its uh, can up its status right among additive manufacturing labs in research institutions. It was so that like we can inspire the people here in DeKalb to want to work on stuff that are going to matter and uh, change people's lives. Uh, and so you know, like I said, we got to go on live television. We um, we almost made it to the Ellen Show. Ellen. I'm looking at you because I'm so disappointed that that never materialized. So if you watch this, just remember, we can have a talk. Um, <laughs> but actually, in all actuality, we, I did talk with her, and it just didn't work out for the times. But anyway, um, but it wasn't about that, like I said. It was about literally pushing our limits 
our own personal limits, each one of us. So me as the engineer and the designer, Sarah as a violinist who learned right how to use what I was giving her um, to play just as well as she's already been playing. And then my boss for supporting me, because <laughs> I know I'm very frustrating to work with sometimes. Uh, and uh, absolutely just was stunning what we could do, right? When we kind of put ourselves back and we tried to say, OK, how can I put other people before me? And how can I use that as my fuel? How can I use my failures? How can I use every single thing? How can I use this whole process, right, of creating and learning to push my limits? Um, and so for me, I'm going to have Sarah come up here because, and play a little bit for us. Because for me, it's not real, honestly, until I get to just kind of see what I worked on during the last couple months, almost a year now, um, gets to help her and hopefully people in the future. So Sarah, do you want to come up and play? Guys, it's all her, honestly. And so kind of uh, looking towards the future, I kind of see this as like my little like team now, right? As I, um, as I kind of split my time between one, trying to graduate, because that's the most important thing, as always, academia. Um, Anyway, uh, to uh, you know, doing continually doing research with my boss, that's Dr. Shimarello. He deserves a lot of thanks um, with the prosthetics and with our 3D printing capabilities. And then three, now shifting to Argon and and using what I've learned in 3D printing to help um, to help solve the world's energy crisis. Hopefully, um, absolutely wonderful projects that I get to work on. Um, but here in the scope of like the NIU and, and what we're doing here, it's we kind of want to. Um, use what we made for Sarah and create prosthetics for other people. So like people have been coming to me, sending, me, uh, sending us emails on LinkedIn or our, uh, our emails and had been like, hey, so what you did is cool. Can you do that for me? Or is, that, is there something like we can modify it, right? And, and my hope is while I get to work on that, while my time at NIU remains, that we get to raise up new students, right? A new like, kind of generation of engineers who kind of see like, OK, this is what I've learned in class. I'm hungry for more. How can I do more? How can I help people in the community and make an impact worldwide? And that's kind of what we're marching on towards. And it's exciting if you think about it in that scope, because it's not, it's not an assignment. It doesn't feel like a work assignment. It doesn't feel like a research, a research assignment either. It's, it's more like, it's, it's kind of like you almost feel like, if I want to push my limits, and when I do, like this is what can kind of happen. This is, this is the story that I can take. Not so I can get media thanks, right, but because not only is it going to change me, it's going to change the people around me. And that's the effect, I feel, like as a college student, you want to have in your communities. And I'm just so blessed by that. And I thank God every day that I could have such an opportunity and hopefully will get more opportunities like this uh, in my time and in my career. So um, guys, and just in short, I hope you guys realize why it's so important to push your limits, right? And, and not stay stagnant, right? But, but to look forward to the future and, and not nearsightedness and, and say, OK, this is what my vision is. How can I change people while I do that? How can I be better for myself and for other people? So thank you. Have a great day. Thanks.